Hello, I'm Daniel Harper. Welcome to TMN Television on Thursday, October 17th. Tonight, we take a look at the progress of Truman's forensics team this season. We also check out the next installment of our movie review segment. And don't forget to stay tuned for our Truman Sports update. These stories and more tonight on TMN Television. You don't want to miss this. The Truman State University forensics team has competed in two tournaments so far this season, advancing into elimination rounds in multiple events and securing 12 national qualifications. The most recent tournament, October 4th and 5th at Southwest Baptist University, is where the team picked up eight of those qualifications. Senior Caleb Daniels was a semifinalist in debate, and freshman Zoe Francisco made it to the quarterfinals of the novice division in her first tournament. Chris Outzen, forensics director, said he was happy the team didn't really have any standout strengths because they did well in a number of different categories. Outzen described the team as cohesive and well-rounded at the tournament, which showed off its comprehensive forensics education that seeks to value speech and debate equally. Students and faculty have access to the prayer and meditation room, which is located on the first floor of Baldwin Hall. The Interfaith Center sponsors the room and stocks it. Director of the Office of Citizenship and Community Standards, J.D. Smizer, says the room is a safe space for people to express their worldviews. All faith and world perspectives are welcome. Smizer says people can use the pil pillows, bulletin board, room divider, and rugs to help them relax and reflect. Currently, Smizer says the prayer and meditation room isn't actively monitored for use. The existence of a prayer and meditation room is a way to talk more about inclusion on campus. The room is one of the only spaces reserved for faith and reflection at Truman. Director of the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, Brad Turnbull, says representation is only a small part of furthering an inclusive community. Turnbull says the room is a great way to start a conversation about why diversity spaces are important. The Center for Diversity and Inclusion supports people using the room to reflect and grow. Truman State University's enrollment number for fall 2019 was around 5,200 students. There are about 2,100 males and 3,100 females. This number has dropped from fall 2018's enrollment number, with 8,500 students enrolled then. Because these numbers are affecting major departments as well as campus organizations, administration is looking to change its recruitment process. Tara Hart, Director of Admissions, says the admissions team is partnering with high school teachers and counselors to give presentations about the admissions process so students can get step-by-step -step instruction. Hart says this will help make the application process easier. Hart says admissions has a new Home for the Holidays program where current students can talk about their tr Truman at their old high schools. Another change the office is making is to remove the words highly selective from their talking points and instead plan to highlight the liberal arts education. Chana Lange, Vice President of Enrollment Management and Marketing, says most students are interested because of the value and cost of Truman, but stay because of the experience and excellence the university has to offer. Lange says because of this, the recruitment team is going to first talk about the excellence of Truman and then about its value to prospective students. The ongoing lawsuit against Truman State University, the Alpha Kappa Lambda fraternity, and former student and fraternity member Brandon Grossheim has a motion hearing scheduled for Monday, October 21st. The wrongful death suit was filed from the parents of two students who committed suicide in the 2016-2017 school year. The evidence held against Grossheim states that he was close to all five of the individuals who committed suicide that year, and he was the last person to see them alive or the first person to find their body. The university has also been accused of failing to be transparent about the alleged psychological manipulation. Each of the defendant's attorneys filed a motion to dismiss the case. Professor of Business Administration and a former practicing attorney, Steve Smith, said that there is nothing significant about motioning to dismiss the case and that it happens regularly. Marty Jane, Professor Emeritus of Justice Systems with a law degree, 
says if the case can survive the motion to dismiss, it will move to the discovery phase. At this phase, each side will try to learn what the other side knows and find evidence for their conclusions. Next up, we have our Truman weather forecast. Be sure to stay tuned after the break for our Truman sports update. of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. The men's and women's cross-country teams traveled to Nashville, Tennessee to compete in the 2019 Treveca Division II Showcase. The men finished in the middle of the pack, coming in 6th place out of 11th teams, while the women placed higher in the 4th place. The women received 109 points, while the men got 171 points. Freshman Nathan Key, who was the top runner for the Bulldogs, and came in at number 32 overall said he was happy with his personal results and finished under his 27 minutes goal. Carly Garnett, who crossed the finish line first for Truman and the 18th overall, said the competition was tough, but the Bulldogs were able to compete and even set personal bests. The golf team came in third at the Drury University Inv Fall Invitational and eighth at the Lewis Flyer Intercollegiate Tournament. At Drury, the U ladies came in third out of the six schools. The team's stroke consistency improved by day two, by two on the second day, but unfortunately Fitzpatrick said scores weren't ideal on either day. On the first day, Truman State University scored a 342, placing them three points behind Columbia College. The team was not able to catch up with Columbia College on day two with a score of 340, but it was able to maintain its lead against Quincy University and Southwest Baptist University finishing with a total score of 682. Even though the team lost this tournament, their goal is to win their last fall tournament at the Park University Fall Classic in Parkville, Missouri. <laughs> Sophomore Kara Hunt was Truman's top individual scorer at Drury, chying for 11th place. She finished with an 86 after the first <laughs> round and concluded with an 83 for the second. Fitzpatrick said the team is confident going to the last tournament because last season they placed second and he said he believes this would be a great way to end the season. This week is Truman's homecoming week. The Bulldogs are taking on Missouri University of Science and Technology this Saturday for homecoming. This will be the first game back from their first loss of the season against Lindenwood University. The team was up by 10 until the Lions scored a touchdown, recovered the ball, and continued to run down the field and score. The Bulldogs are 2-1 in the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Overall, the Bulldogs' current record is 5-1. to one. Head coach Greg Nesbitt says whether the team wins or not will not affect how they prepare for a game. During the week, Nesbitt says coaches and players alike will attempt to learn from last week's loss. This has been your Truman Sports Update. Be sure to stay tuned after the break. Cape Air, your wings to St. Louis, with nonstop service starting at just $29 each way. Enjoy free parking at the Kirksville Regional Airport. Then hop on one of our fast flights to St. Louis and be there in under an hour. You can take the Metrolink from the airport directly to your favorite downtown destination. Dine, shop, catch a game, or visit the zoo. Save time getting to St. Louis and more time enjoying St. Louis. Book today at capeair.com and enjoy the ride. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight. 
For complete news coverage, be sure to stay tuned to KTRM and pick up a copy of The Index and look at Detour Magazine's latest adventure online. Don't forget to also check out our news content on tmn.truman.edu. You can also follow TMN on Facebook and Twitter for breaking news updates. And if you missed part of our broadcast tonight, check out TMN TV on YouTube. If you've ever thought about being on TV, be sure to head on over to tmn.truman.edu slash apply to fill out an application today. And be sure to stay tuned after the show for our segment, Real People with Sam Elkins, where he will be discussing Joker from all of us here at TMN. Thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of the week. people this is episode two joker review now before we get into the video i just gotta say we had some technical difficulties my uh guest jake and i spoke for too long and the camera stopped recording it cut out so it cut off a lot of good stuff because of this much of what you will see in this review is all about joker as a film and joker as a film about the joker the DC character. I just want to issue a disclaimer before this review. Joker has a harmful depiction of mental illness, in my opinion. It didn't seem to make any attempt to narrow down what Joker's mental illness was. Um, it just referred to it as a mental illness, which that is a very broad term. There are uh, a large variety of vastly different mental illnesses, uh, and there are millions upon millions of people with mental illnesses that have no inclination to go on any murder spree and I think lumping them in with a homicidal and genocidal maniac is pretty harmful. It felt very much like the message could be misconstrued as treat people with mental illnesses as people or they will go shoot a bunch of people and start a class war, which I think that is a harmful message, even if it wasn't intended. So I just wanted to say that before we get into it, enjoy the video. Hello, welcome back. This is Real People. I'm your host, Sam Elkins. I'm joined today by the one and only Jake Wolf. Um, this is the show where I just have people on. We just talk about movies we've seen. This week, we're doing the one and only Joker with Joaquin Phoenix. Uh, some initial thoughts coming out of Joker, uh, it felt very long. I felt a lot like the movie was building up to something that it did not, that didn't happen. Yeah. Do not expect to see a movie rich in the character or rich in the lore. I felt like kind of the character of the Joker and the world that they had created the movie in in some ways detracted from the message and the story they were trying to tell. Another thing I didn't really like about it is that the only character that felt even remotely fleshed out was Joker. The whole movie was comprised of intimate shots of Joaquin Phoenix. You can see the emotion on his face and his body movements and that was really impressive. But you can't make a movie solely with that. What are some good things? What are some things that you did enjoy about the film? The movie, in a lot of ways, portrayed the character the best that we have seen. One obvious thing that I think most people can appreciate, at least, about the film was Joaquin Phoenix's performance. You can see that he was actually feeling those emotions on his face and, and like I said, in his body movements as well. I think if they had utilize that a little differently, um, then I, I think it could have been one of the definitive Joker performances. Right. I thought it did a very good job of telling an original story about the character mm -hmm. and kind of spinning a different view that you wouldn't expect. I thought it was refreshing, especially yeah. after coming yeah. off of Endgame and yeah. off of all of the Infinity Saga. 
I thought it was a, a very good balance between kind of the Tim Burton Gotham yeah. and the Christopher Nolan Gotham. Yeah. I really. thought it did a good job of distancing itself from our reality, yeah. but not diving into Tim Burton. Yeah, and that, I think, almost makes it more disappointing to me that they didn't follow through because they had they were really close. They had a few moments where you did get to see kind of the, the chaos of Gotham, but they, they didn't go through with it. All right, everybody, that's all the time we have today for this episode of Real People. If you'd like to see the full spoilery version of the Joker review, uh, check it out on TMN Television's YouTube page. Um, it should be posted there pretty soon. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, tune in next week where I will be reviewing Zombieland Double Tap. Very exciting film. I've been waiting for this for 10 years. Uh, so I'm excited to review it, to watch it everything so thanks for watching